Morning, all. Now, I was talking to Lagman、um, via the YouTube comments system the other evening about、um, internal resistance of cells, and we were talking specifically about、uh, nickel metal hydride, Eneloops,、um, and the older non-LSD batteries. And we were sort of talking about how would you measure the internal resistance of cells because Some of these old non-LSD ones, like for example,、uh, some of these older ones here. This Uniros one I bought at a DIY store, and they were selling it cheap because it had been in the store for about two years, probably unsold. And、uh, one of the four of these, when I got it, just didn't work. It just wouldn't charge properly.、Uh, this Intec off the internet, Duracell. This is a pound shop one. It's a ready to use, so in theory, it's an LSD. And a lot of my GP,、uh, the old thirteen hundreds that I had, are just failing. And you can see that actually、uh, on the PowerX charger, you can see that that thirteen hundred on the display is reading high. And what that means is that it's high resistance. But the PowerX doesn't tell you what the resistance is. It'd be nice if it actually told you in ohms, which it doesn't. And、uh, now that I've started playing with、uh, these lithium cells. Internal resistance is also becoming an issue because the cheap ultrafire, which is in the charger there, seems to get to a high voltage very quickly. It seems to go up to 4.2 volts very quickly and then spend a long time there. Well, that made me think that must have a high internal resistance. And then I've recently bought this Efest、um, battery, which although it has a, a modest capacity. Stay still.、Um, this is a lithium manganese, and this has a 10 amp rating. So that should, in theory, have a very low internal resistance. But again, I want a method of measuring it. So what do I do? Well, of course, the first thing I do is go straight to eBay, and here we are. Look, an impedance meter. In fact, it's a 20 ohm internal battery resistance impedance meter tester. Well, it looks okay, and there's a button there on the front to、uh, set it to. To different ranges, but it's terribly expensive. Twenty-five pounds eighty. I just don't think I can justify that sort of expenditure on that device just because of a curiosity about、uh, battery internal resistance. So, how would you go about actually measuring the internal resistance of a battery? Well, I've modelled it here on this diagram.、Um, this is the battery without internal resistance. V is the voltage across it. Here's the internal resistance, which I've just called X. And、uh, here's an external resistor which I've called R. I is the current flowing through that resistor, and V is the voltage across the resistor. And V, R, and I, of course, are、um, in the relationship Ohm's law. V equals I R, I equals V over R, R equals V over I. So on the internet, looking for guidance on how this is done, and I came across this technical bulletin by Energizer on battery internal resistance, and. When you read this, it's a very interesting document. It's only two pages. It's worth seeking this one out.、Um, I'll put the uh, uh, URL of this in the、uh, description. But what it's saying here on this graph is that you should take two measurements: one with a stabilizing current drain. Here they're saying five milliamps, and another one with a heavy drain. At the bottom there, it says five hundred and five milliamps. So what they're saying is you can't take a measurement. With no current flowing, because you'll get an unrealistic、uh, measurement of voltage. So we need two measurements:、uh, low current measurement and a high current measurement. And then delta voltage is the difference between those two voltage measurements, and delta、uh, current is the difference between the two currents. And if you look at this bit, it says using Ohm's law, the total effective resistance is subsequently calculated by dividing the change in voltage by the change in current. Well. Why? What I couldn't work out is why taking two voltage measurements and two current measurements with two different external resistor values, and dividing delta V by delta I, the difference in the two voltage measurements by the difference in the two current measurements, why that would give you X, the internal resistance of the battery. It just didn't make sense. So I'm afraid that means some maths. Well, this is a potential divider. So the voltage V across R will be what will it be? It will be R over R plus X times VB. So let's write that down. So here it is: V equals R over R plus X 
times VB, but we're taking two measurements. So I'm going to call this V1. V1 equals R1, that's the first resistor value, over R1 plus X. X, remember, is the internal resistance. That's the value we're actually trying to find, uh, times VB. But we're also doing a second one. So I've put a second equation down, V2, where we're using a different resistor, R2, equals R2 over R2 plus X, also times VB. And that's when I thought, ah, this is good, This because we can get rid of VB by making this simultaneous equations. If I rearrange these so that VB is the uh, on the left-hand side, we can equate the two other parts. I'll show you what I mean. So rearranging for VB, we've got V1, R1 plus X over R1, but it also equals V2, R2 plus X over R2. They are both VB. So actually now what we can do is just stop worrying about VB, which is something we can never measure anyway, because we can't measure the voltage of the battery without the internal resistance if current is flowing. An energizer is saying that's what you have to do. So now I've got an equation where the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Now I worked this through several times and came up against a brick wall, but eventually I found a way of doing this. And I'll just very briefly show you because maths isn't very interesting, is it? The trick, it turned out, was to do substitutions based on Ohm's law. So for example, here, look, we've got V1 over R1. Well, in Ohm's law, I equals V over R, so I can substitute that for I1. So we've got I1, R1 plus X equals I2, R2 plus X. So also from Ohm's law, we know that I, R is V. So where I've got I times R there, I can put V, and similarly V2 in place of I multiplied by R2. Now ultimately what we're trying to find is X, so I'm rearranging to try and move X to the left-hand side uh, with this one, and then down here I've factored X out, and eventually you come down to this. X, the internal resistance of the battery, is V2 minus V1, the difference between the two voltage measurements, divided by I1 minus I2, the difference between the current current measurements. And if you notice, these are different ways round. So here you've got um, uh, 2 minus 1, here you've got 1 minus 2. And that does make sense because um, the voltage is going to go up as the current comes down. So that just gives you a positive result for internal resistance. Otherwise all you'd get is a negative internal resistance, which would be the right value, but it just wouldn't make sense. So there it is. It's delta V over delta I. So it all makes sense. Energizer were right. So here's how it's going to be done. I've got a couple of battery holders here. On the left is the 18650 holder, and on the right is the AA holder. Now they have these really flimsy wires, so I'm going to cut them off altogether. And I found these very tiny M2 nuts and bolts. So I'm going to pass those through the hole in that rivet in the end of the holder, and that will give me something to uh, attach a reasonably high current wire to. And then I'm going to put the low value resistor directly across the holder. So that will be there at all times. And then I'm going to introduce a high value resistor, a bit like this one here. This is a 3 watt uh, 0.27 ohms. It just happens to be soldered to the bottom of an old VU meter. Now I don't have the resistors yet, but that's the sort of thing I'm going to use. And I'm going to switch that high value resistor into circuit using a MOSFET. Now here I've got an IRF 1404, which has an incredibly low on resistance, but I've also got this IRL 1404, which is a logic level, and that will be very useful because it only requires 5 volts on the gate, and that means that it can be switched using one of these Arduino Pro Minis. So I've got most of the bits. I don't have the uh, resistors yet. I've got to uh, try and work out what values I want to use, but that's the stuff I'm going to use to build this um, internal resistance tester. Now Energizer are saying this test involves placing a battery on a low background drain allowing it to first stabilize and then pulsing it with a heavier load for approximately a hundred milliseconds. And if you look at the graph again you can see there on the time uh, graph that they're running it for approximately a hundred milliseconds. And that's a fairly short period of time and that's why I wanted to bring in the Arduino now initially I, I won't put a display on the Arduino because you can just send data back over the USB 
to the host computer. So the first measurements will be done using that technique. Um, but eventually this might get a display put on it. And my favorite display at the moment is the little OLED. So that's probably what I'll go for um, if I put a display on this uh, on this project.